Bonjour and welcome to episode 7 of On the Trail of Ansel Adams. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs, my name is Serge Ramelli. I am a French photographer living in the beautiful, the romantic, the incroyable city of Paris, France. And I'm in Yosemite National Park on the trail of Anson Adams. If you want to get the raw file of this episode, all you have to do is subscribe to my daily newsletter. For this, you have to sign up on my website, put in your email address, confirm it, and then you can access to all the free lessons. Each free lesson has source files that you can just click on and download once you're logged in. All right, so we are still in Yosemite National Park, and I want to take a photo of what you see behind me. And I want to try different techniques, and I will show you how I compose this photo and how I find what I hope the most powerful composition. So, let's start. Okay, so let me show you another framing that I had, another idea that I had as I walked around the lake. Look at this. This is pretty cool. Make sure you don't take this kind of foreground as a foreground element. I'm going to walk up closer to the water because I don't want any of that grass. You know, grass is a high frequency texture and it's not good. So here is a nice view. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make two panels, one and two. And then I'm going to go like this. Po uh, portrait mode in one, two, three, four, five. Everything at 16 millimeter. And you see here, there's a bit of grass. I might Photoshop them out because I really only want the water to be the foreground element. Let me go back here and voila, or maybe, yeah. Okay, so let's take the photo. I think we, I found a really cool framing and with a, the ND filter, the water is gonna be mirror and the, the, the sky is gonna be a bit more stretchy. Let's do it. All right, so we are back in Lake Trum, and this is the final photo that we're going to be retouching today, mesdames et messieurs. I'm happy about that, but before we get started, I just want to remind you that if you go to photosearch.com and you click on my gear, you have this amazing banner called the Authorized Affinity Partner with Adobe. When you click on it, you come to this page, and on this page, it's going to detect which country you are in, and it's going to give you 20% off the Creative Cloud Photography, 20% off, meaning for $7.99 instead of $9.99, you can get Photoshop and Lightroom. Two coffee for two amazing softwares. For people that used to use, uh, buy a lot of license, you know, f big agencies had to buy five to 10 license every 18 months. Now getting Photoshop and Lightroom just for two price, for two coffees, it's amazing. All right, so let's jump into Lightroom and let me show you how I came to that result. So starting off with the first photo, which was the normal photo. Um, I The first one was completely blurry. So I'm gonna go on the second one, which is not blurry. Uh, so this is, uh, actually, this is the first photo, and this is the second photo. It's like a panorama that I'm doing. I kind of like it. Just let me show you. Uh, this was shot at 20 second F20 ISO 100. Remember when you're ISO 100, so you got a very low sensitivity. When you put an ND filter 1000 at F20, you really stop the light from coming. It's pure daylight, so you can go away with 20 seconds of exposure. And I wanted to get a bit more of exposure so what I did is I wanted to get a bit more stretchy cloud. So I went to ISO 80, kept it at F20, and it went 25 seconds, and I went into portrait mode. One, two, three. And I covered the entire scene. I love the drama in the photo like this. So I'm going to right-click, edit, photo merge, panorama. And this is great, a new option that we have in Lightroom CC where we can make panoramas. Now we have to go to other softwares, and now a lot of them you can just do in Lightroom, which is amazing. Really amazing feature. So by default, it's going to put you on a cylindrical, um, the cylindrical uh, projection. Uh, I think on this one, I like more spherical because, um, yeah, I just think it looks just better. If you try to go on perspective on this one, it's not going to work. It's going to say, unable to merge the photos, please try a different option. The reason is because uh, what, what's happening is that uh, I shot at 16 millimeters, so very wide. And when you have three photos very wide, sometimes it's hard for the software to do the perspective mode. Okay, a new option came out recently in Lightroom CC, which is called the boundary warp. You have to make sure your Lightroom is fully up to date to get that. But let me show you what it does. It's pretty cool. You, so with this option, if you go to the right, 
you will see it's going to fill in the blanks and just fill in the whole screen. On this one, I didn't do that. I j this is the final result of the panel uh, using the spherical uh, mode. Uh, the thing is, that's, that are, that's really cool about it, is this is a DNG file, meaning I can start my retouching just now. That is something that's completely new because you're retouching a raw file uh, and you're only doing it once you did the panel. The, why, why, why is that so exceptional? I'll tell you why. Because in the past, I used to retouch first every single photo and then, you know, with a certain white balance, a certain look, I would synchronize my retouch from one to the next, and then I would do my panel. And then sometimes I'm like, oh no, I don't like the white balance. I don't like the look. I don't like, you know, I don't like this or that. And then it was really hard to correct. Now I'm starting everything now, which is really cool. I really like that. So on this one, I'm first going to uh, crop it, and I'm going to crop it uh, like this about. I really want to make a panel in like this. Maybe, actually, maybe let's just get th this little cloud in here. And maybe I like to get the whole reflection. And of course, I want to crop that and I and that. OK, I'm going to start with that cropping for now. It's kind of panoramic, but not that much. OK, and I'm going to use the Ansel Adams Lightroom preset, which is you can get all five for free. Uh, within if you subscribe to my newsletter and you go to my website you can get them for free so let me show you the first one called aa basics aa stands for ansel adams so that's the first one not bad then i'm going to go to aa drama gradient filter i'm going to click on this one too dark then i'm going to go to aa drama radial circle dark way too dark and then i'm going to go to aa drama radial circle light Ooh, i'm liking that and then I'm going to go to AA Drama Radial Circle Middle. And I'm liking that even more. So I'm going to take this. Remember, the preset is only a starting point. All it does is add magical drama to your photo, which I'm going to reverse engineer for you now so you see what's going on. The first thing, let me just make some room now that we are done with this thing. Uh, I'm going to press the Alt key to check my blacks. So my blacks is very black. It's cool. I'm not going to touch that. I'm going to check my white. So you have to hold on the Alt key on your keyboard or Option key. And I'm going to click on that. The white is not bad. You can also just move that around, you know, make it darker or brighter. I like to do to see for real what's going on. Highlights and shadows I don't touch. Exposure I kind of like. Let's see if I go a little brighter or a little darker. I think zero is good. And uh, contrast, I did a lot of contrast. I kind of like that. Okay, maybe just a little tiny more exposure like it was. Okay, that's good. Then I'm going to take the radial circle. Now, if there is five or six radial circle in that photo, you can hardly tell, right? Well, if you click here, and you will see before the radial circle, after. They are pretty much invisible, but you have to place them in the right place. The preset is only a starting point. So this one, for example, is on a shadow. I don't want this. I want to see, I want to put it here. See how it makes that a little brighter. This, I want to make this here and maybe even more powerful. You know, don't hesitate. Don't do it too much. This is pretty good, but I'm going to erase this part probably at the end. So I'm going to erase this one. I don't want this one. This one, this one's not bad. And this one is a bit too big. I just want it to be on the Yosemite folds. And voila. Okay, I'm going to check my graded filter. Let's see before the graded filter, after. Oh, I made it just a dramatic sky. Maybe a bit too much. I'm going to bring it. Oops. Sorry. I'm going to yeah, I'm going to make it higher up a little bit so it's not a strong drama, but I like how, I like how it makes the this the you know, the sky very blue very uh, sorry very black blue sky become very black which you which uh Ansel Adam used to do that with orange filters that he used to put on his four by five cameras now you can because of the quality of the raw files you can just do it in post which i find is really cool so much convenient than having to have a filter big uh you know on your camera it's pretty cool okay so now i just have to do some uh, erase some spots so i'm first i when erase spots i'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because there is not that much much but there is, you know, when uh, it's a big file, if I have to go and check out every spot, it can take a little while. So what I usually do on a video, I just show you the most obvious ones. I use then the visualize spot option, make sure I don't s didn't miss any big ones like this one that I just missed here. Boom. And this one I missed. Boom. And this one I missed. Boom. In your face. Voila. Parfait. Merci beaucoup. Visual spot. Okay. 
So that's the visual spoiled. Uh, okay, the next thing is I want to go to Photoshop and I want to erase this. So let's right click, edit, and edit in Adobe Photoshop CC 2015. So here I am in Photoshop. So very quickly, very quickly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this layer and I'm going to drag and drop it on this to duplicate it. So now I have a layer that's duplicated. So whatever I do, if I mess up, I always can come back to the first one. The first thing I'm going to try to do is the easy method, which does not always work, is, is use uh, the Lacio tool. I just take a Lacio tool like this and uh, boom, 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 to select this the area. And then I go to Edit, Fill, Content Aware, and click OK. And then you pray. You go to a church and you pray. Oh, it doesn't work well. Look, it copied the mountain and put it in water. Even worse. So Command Z to undo. Now let me show you a little trick, but please tell no one. So I'm going to put a mask. I'm going to take a brush, a big brush. Make sure my brush has a harness of 80. And then I'm going to make sure it's black as foreground, opacity 100. And I'm going to hide that layer. Okay, and then I'm just going to brush here. I want to, I'm just hiding the top of the mountain. I'm I'm only leaving the water. Why am I doing that? This is just a temporary fix. You see, I have a mask. Anything which is black is invisible. Now I'm click. I click on this, and I just do the same thing that I just did. Take the lasso tool, make a little lasso around the part I want to erase. Okay, I go to Edit, Fill, same thing, Content Aware, press OK. But this time, I'm telling the software because of the mask, ignore the mountains, only deal the water. And ba bam, check this out. Uh, how is that? Now I can just throw the mask away and um, delete. And it's, sorry, it's not completely done, but hey, it's a good start, right? So usually what I usually do then is I take a little stem tool, make sure the stem is not too big, make sure the stem is harness is at 0% and that the mode is on normal, okay? Classic stem, basically, this stem that you see every day. And first I'm going to correct something is weird here. Okay, it's even weirder now. Uh -huh. So what you can do is you can zoom in on the problem area. And this can go sometimes. Like, I, honestly, I got lucky. I really got lucky on this one. So I'm going to take the stamp. Take it very close to the problem area. Make it small. Uh, I'm going to Alt here. And I'm going to copy here. Okay, it's not working at all. I hate that. So... Uh, one way of doing that, I'll show you another way that I try sometimes, which is really cool. I take the lasso tool again, and this time I put the feather of the lasso tool at 10 pixel, which is already here. See, feather here, 10 pixel. And I just, I'm just gonna take this part here, okay? So now I have a selection, but this section has a 10% 10 pixel feather, meaning it's blurry around here. I'm gonna press Command J. So now on, on my layer, I only have this piece of water, and then this piece of water, I'm going to press Command-T. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger here. Okay, it's creating other problems, but it's. I think it's still a little bit better. Uh, I'm going to make it, you know, I'm going to press Command-T and I'm going to hold down the Alt key and the Shift key so that when I make it bigger, it becomes bigger everywhere. I think it's going to give a better result. Okay, I make it bigger, bigger until I kind of have what I like. Cool. Okay, then I merge the two. Okay, it's not there yet, but it's getting better. Then I take my stem tool, make it pretty big, and then uh, I can lower the opacity of my stem tool to 50%. And I just click here where there is some weird stuff. And here, I mean, l luckily water is a very random thing, you know, so it's kind of like, this kind of looks weird. So maybe I can take that and just er erase some of that. Okay, that's really weird what I just did. So Command Z, Command Alt Z to undo a couple of more times. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. I um, just want to make this a bit less visible. This is kind of weird. I mean, you know, water is very random. You know, I just want I just want to make it in a way so that somebody walks in the room can say, Oh, this was Photoshop. I can see it was Photoshop. You're a cheater. Of course I am a cheater. I'm the biggest cheater in the world. But I love it. I'm just trying to erase some grass. Okay. Ah, it's not so good. It's not so good. Okay. And sometimes something else that works pretty well is the patch tool. When you get, and sometimes it does not work well. You can take an area of problem and drag and drop it and pray. C Command D. Eh, 
Yeah, now we it's pretty good there, but now we have another issue. So usually what I do, and sometimes I'm just happy that it works really fast, and sometimes it's hell on earth. So, okay, little brush, and I'm not going to spend half an hour on it. I am not going to spend half an hour on it. Okay, uh, back to the patch tool. I'm just taking that arrow problem and dropping it there. Sometimes it makes it more smoother. Sometimes it does not. Yeah. Okay, stem tool. I still want to get stem tool. That. And really, it's a trial and error process. It's, you know, and honestly, the first time I did it was much better. But of course, because I'm recording a video, you know, now it doesn't work really as much. But honestly, it's not so bad if you look at it from like this. And maybe uh, I'm going to crop it a little more to take out of the problem area a little more. Something like this, even so I lose that. But I think it's pretty cool. I don't think anybody's ever going to guess that there was some grass here. Voila. Oh, yeah, there is an issue that I haven't seen. So I'm going to take a little stem tool and just make it here. Okay, now, yeah, you don't want to leave something really bad here. And I would spend a bit more time. I just, you know, you get a bit the idea. I don't want to spend half an hour on this. But, you know, before there was grass and now there is no more grass and there is nice reflection. That's a bit the idea. And that's the final photo. I hope you like this. Now, if you like this type of tutorials on Lightroom and Photoshop, well, I have a little surprise here. If you go to my website, photosearch.com, and you click on tutorials, and you come to the most popular one. My two most popular courses is Photoshop for Photographer and Lightroom CC Complete Training. Each is about five to six hours. It's got a tons of raw file. It's really my flagship courses. And because you're watching this video, I'm going to give you a good discount. If you put in the code PLP251, PLP251, PLP stands by the way for Photography Lightroom Photoshop, which is my workflow. I take a photo, I go into Lightroom, and then I go into Photoshop. PLP 251, that's my number 251 video. You'll get a good discount on this. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm really happy with the final photo. It's one of the best I, I, I got from the Yosemite um, uh, trip that I got. I really love this one because you can see the, the fall here. You can see the half dome there, and the sky is crazy. And I don't know. I just love the photo. I would frame that photo, but tell no one, please. Thank you very much and see you in another episode. Do you want to get hundreds of raw files from all over the place where you can play around with? Do you want to get amazing free Lightroom presets, free brushes, free Photoshop actions? All you have to do is enter your email address. You will receive an email. You can then create an account and then you can access this free lesson tab. You can choose from over 200 and free lessons. Every free lesson is going to have source files for you to download and play around with. It's a great way to learn photography, learn post-processing for nothing. No money, it's all free. It's a gift to you as a member of photosearch.com. So thank you and welcome, and let's do some photos together.